Hello, and today I wanted to show you the cars of the Porsche DLC number one for Assetto Corsa. I wanted to talk about them shortly and how they handle, how much performance they have, but really, really shortly. So you've got a little bit of an opinion whether you want to buy the pack or not, maybe if, if you haven't decided yet. As of the time of recording this, the DLC isn't yet out on the console, so you might still have the time to make the decision. So yeah, that's that's the point of that video. So the first DLC contains obviously seven cars. I know the second is already released, okay? But I wanted to give the Kuno Simulazioni a little bit of time, because usually after they did release the DLC and the patch, they also a few days a few weeks even sometimes they release patches after patches to patch the patches um, because you know they have some bugs and suspension alignments and how the cars behave and other things so I just gave them a chance to fix them before finally reviewing the cars first we will start with the free car which is the Porsche Panamera Turbo second generation of the Porsche Panamera on paper it has really serious performance figures it has 550 brake horsepower and it goes from 0 to 100 in under 4 seconds it is not a sports car you have to remember it is an executive saloon that just turns out to be very fast I would say it holds on to that figures in the game because it is really really impressive in the straight line with its four-wheel drive it accelerates really really quickly and not only from 0 to 100 and then but then it really keeps on going you reach 200 in no time it is very impressive in that fact but you have to also consider it weighs over two tons so while it gains the speed really quickly you have to break quite a bit earlier than you might think because you will be going faster speed than you could probably realize and you have two tons to slow down so yeah the braking isn't the greatest in the corners it is on the understeer side it is quite safe and quite easy to drive for the performance it boasts it can do some rather serious lap times surprisingly but it is just not that much fun in the corners it feels understeer it feels heavy you cannot play with it much it is rather easy to drive if you're not a very good driver this is probably a decent car to drive because it, it's not problematic we, even with the, all the assists off if you're not a massive idiot of, and if you're not overshooting corners with too much speed it will not bite you it will not behave unsurprisingly if you manhandle it try to balance with left foot braking and throwing the car into the corner and mashing the, your right foot you will get a little bit of power slides going on but it's four-wheel drive is quite safe it's a bit it's not really demanding to drive and it's not great fun but it's good to have such car in the game as well oh yeah and it has a rear spoiler that erects in a really cool way now for the second car i've taken the 1974 porsche 911 carrera rsr 3.0 it is a racing old school 911 carrera with wide body kit three liter naturally aspirated air cooled with an additional oil cooler engine uh, developing 330 brake horsepower and weighing just 850 kilos it is the classic 911 what else can you say it looks rather brilliant and with this power to weight ratio for a 40 year old car it is no slouch its behavior on the track complete opposite to what the Panamera is this is lively agile oversteery <laughs> and it will bite your head off when you're not careful it is very satisfying to drive and very demanding you have to put a lot of steering input because eventually you'll go sideways sooner or later and I think sooner it's just the balance of the old 911 just the simpler suspension you can probably sort it out a little bit by adjusting the suspension settings but on the default it's maybe not a wild animal but you have to be careful anyway it also has a limited slip differential with which is locked quite a bit so if you're too much on throttle you will oversteer if you're too much off throttle 
will oversteer because of the weight on the rear. It only comes with the 1970s vintage racing tyre so it doesn't have huge amounts of grip but it's not like it is all over the place and it's slow, no. But it sounds great, it is really fun to drive, at the same time being tricky, it's not overly quick so it's fun it's just fun and satisfying to drive i really like it however annoying it can sometimes be when spinning out you know like you can handle it you think you start to understand it and then it just in the most inappropriate and unexpected moment it spins you out but that's how the 911 is next is another porsche from the same year basically 1973 Porsche 917 slash 30 Spider. It is not the 917 Porsche known for the European Le Mans race. It is a car that competed in Canadian American se racing series where there were barely any rules and limitations to the power and weight. So this car's figures are like follows. 1200 brake horsepower with only 800 kilograms of weight. That's 1500 brake horsepower per ton. It is mental to drive. It has huge turbo, which the pressure of the turbo can be adjusted while driving. And at 1900%, the turbo is so powerful that it constantly damages the engine over time. So if you need to overtake someone, then use it, but then go back down to 80%. The traction is non-existent at second gear and third is all right so you have to play with the turbo to actually get it going properly off the line for example not spit not to spin out the reason match downfalls because that would slow it down in the straight line and it reaches 350 kilometers without any problems really slowing down the car from such speeds is also really demanding and it takes a lot of time it has of course no nothing track no electronical systems to help the driver so yeah it's pretty scary it's a completely different experience but <laughs> it's almost terrifying to drive especially with the turbos on you can disable the turbos completely and then then it is uh, Okay, but with the turbos, oh god, it's mental. It's not a lot of fun, it's more of if your entertainment is to strain yourself and try different things, then yes, try it out, but it's not really fun over time. I think it's too difficult to drive to be fun. It is definitely quite fast in the straight line though. Now the next car is Porsche 935-78. It's from year 1978 with a nickname Moby Dick. Now Steam doesn't allow the word Dick to appear, so it, on Steam you can see it named Moby Hard 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 Hard. Um, the name comes from the famous story about a whale, and the car was named like this because you know it looks a little bit like a fish uh, with its shape and long tail. Um, but also, it is the car is based on Porsche 911 Turbo from that era, but it's way more longer and way more wider for the stability for high speeds. Power to weight ratio is a bit more reasonable in, than in the previous car here, because we have 845 brake horsepower and just above a thousand kilos of weight. It's still damn quick, don't get me wrong. But while the 917 was just fighting for your life and to, to not get out of the road, this is more controllable. This can actually be driven pretty quickly. You know, it's not an easy car to drive, but it is drivable, unlike the, the 917, where I just couldn't get the traction. Once it got on the straight, it was good. This has a little bit, I feel, a bit more downforce, a bit more grip, uh, a bit better brakes, I think. You know, nowhere near the levels of nowadays GT3 cars or GT2, GT1 cars. The just different level, you have to brake way early and the cornering speeds are a bit lower. But it has some decent grip. And it is, as I say, controllable. You can run it on 100% turbo pressure and it doesn't damage the car and if your wheels are straight you're gonna get traction which on the 917 in second gear you didn't <laughs> you had to lower the turbo and then third gear could be at uh, these 80% of the turbo 
damage or not damaging the car. Here, 100% turbo, yeah, you're fine. You have to be careful, but you'll be fine. The turbo doesn't come in as violently. I like the digital dials in the interior, they're clear to read. And yeah, it, it sounds nice, it's drives nice but i don't think we have anything in the game that we can drive it against you know from similar era and similar racing series it did participate in i don't think there's anything like that so that is a shame but the car is really demanding but satisfying and fun to drive of course it's fun to drive in the faster courses like spa notch life there i don't it won't feel well and tight course like Magione. That's obvious because of the power that, that is used here. It will be very good on the Le Mans. But yeah, this car is really fine to drive. I was surprised. I, I was afraid I would get into that car and be, oh no, it's another one of these where I get scared just by getting into them. Now on to the modern cars. I started with the slowest of them, which is the Porsche 718 Cayman S. It is the new Porsche Cayman. Most important thing about the new Cayman and Boxster is that they lost the six cylinder engines. They have flat four cylinder engines, so they have a Subaru engine basically. And it does sound a bit like a Subaru, especially on the lower revs. Higher end, it does sound different, but lower end, it does sound quite similar, because it's the same layout. It has 350 brake horsepower, it weighs 1350 kilos. It's not slow. It is not slow at all. That comes from a 2.5 litre engine, flat 4, as I said before. Of course, the advantage of Cayman over 911 is the better weight distribution. It has the engine in the middle, just in front of the rear axle, so it's better balanced. And you can really feel that. You can take Cayman on, you can change this into street tires. And you can really play with it. It's got enough horsepower to be playable. You can play with your right foot, especially on street tires, no problems. You can set lower grip on the track if you want, but you don't really need to. It slides very well in second gear. And it is so controllable. It, it's not like the 911. 911 is more... You have to be more respectful of it. This is very nice to drive, very balanced, a lot of fun. Still pretty quick. Still not a slow car with these power to weight ratio. Turbo charged engine means it's got some grunt even from the middle of the range. The Cayman has a manual gearbox in this game. So we have 6 speed but they are close together. You can use the gearing very nicely. It's not set up for economy. And you know, the only lackluster thing is the sound. Because I prefer the sound of the 6 cylinder Porsche engine rather than this. I have to get used to it, but the six cylinder would sound better, definitely. But it's a fun car. It's nice, simple, fun car. It's, I would say, it's not as easy to drive as the Panamera. It's got better brakes. I think it, it has better, you know, it's not as overpowered, so it's easier to handle. But it's rear wheel drive, so, you know, the back end will step out if you turn the traction control off and you'll be a bit mental with it. It will step out, no problem, but it. It's easy to manage, so if you want to learn how to handle a rear-wheel drive car, this is pretty good. Maybe start from something even less powerful, like BMW M3 E30 or Mazda MX-5, but this is a good car to learn that won't surprise you. It behaves really, really well and predictable. Very enjoyable car. Now, a different Cayman. Older generation Porsche Cayman GT4. Now, this is the ultimate Cayman for the last generation of this car. It has some parts from the Porsche 911 GT3. It has a 3.8 liter flat 6 naturally aspirated engine that develops 385 brake horsepower and weighs 1340 kilograms. So the figures are not that much off from the other Cayman, the new one Cayman S. However, this is more serious of a car. The Cayman S718 is a fast street car. This is like a track day toy. Brakes from 911 GT3, which is such a small car, are working phenomenal. It has semi, semi slick tires only. It has surprisingly long gear ratios. Like, I guess they had to do something so it won't overperform the 911, I don't know. 
HDS, for example, which I don't know about the price ranges of the 911s and Caymans at the time, you would have to look at them, but they couldn't do Cayman faster than 911 at the same price, because that would be stupid on Porsche's side. So it has long gear ratios that slow it down a little bit. In second gear, you can do 120 kilometers over that even. So it is a bit long. The new Cayman S definitely has shorter gearing, because it has turbocharged engine, I think in straight line it might be just as fast as this. However, this, well, the Cayman S. Okay, I've driven it on street tires, which made it grip less, obviously, but it felt playful, it liked to slide. This, you can also in here unstick the rear if you want to, obviously, but it doesn't feel as happy. It feels more happy being on the limit. You know, taking the corners as quick as you can, braking is phenomenal. You know, the tail will slide a little bit from time to time going out of slow corners, but it's not as happy doing big slides. I feel the suspension is set up differently and you have this big wing on the rear and you don't have the Cayman S had more torque because it's turbocharged. This is more of a performance car, while the Cayman S is just a fun road car. This is really a truck oriented car, which is also satisfying and fun to drive on the limit, but it's just not that playful. If you want to slide the thing, no, get the Cayman S. If you want to attack for a time, this will be faster and just better in every single way, probably. Apart from the straight line, we would have to do a drag race to see. But numbers suggest that Cayman S is just 15 kilos heavier, so that's not a problem. It has 35 brake horsepower less, but it has more torque and the gearing is shorter. So, I don't know. It is definitely a different car. It is still very nicely balanced and it is fun to drive. I, I really like this car, but it's just different. Next car is the Porsche 911 Carrera S, and it is the newest, freshest model, which means it doesn't have a naturally aspirated engine anymore, but it has a turbocharger one. It has 420 brake horsepower, it weighs over 1500 kilos, 500 newton meters of torque, available just from 1700 rpm because of the turbos. It is the more powerful, the road going normal 911 Carrera model. It has the classic look, no fancy wings, but how well does it drive? Well, even on street tires, you have a lot of traction out of the corners. Unless you are, of course, too early on the throttle, then the back end will slide. We have 420 brake horsepower to play with. What did you expect? But because the stubborn Germans are still insisting on placing the engine in the back, you have massive amounts of traction. You don't have to think too much if your wheels are roughly straight, plant the throttle even in second gear, and it goes just goes even on street tires. It's really well behaving and I have to say in over 50 years they have been fiddling with this layout which is wrong but uh, they are too stubborn to admit it so they fiddle with it and it doesn't feel like a rear engined car. It has pretty nice turn and okay there is some understeer but there's less understeer than in the Panamera I feel. There's no sudden oversteer in the middle of the corner if you lift off. It is very well sorted chassis and while the Cayman is still more playful, if you start sliding this car it doesn't feel as unhappy as the Cayman GT4. It just will slide the car but you feel you have a lot of traction on the rear wheel so it will straighten itself out rather easily. You have to counter steer a bit but it has the traction to get you out of the trouble if you plant your foot. Brakes are good, sound is decent because while it's turbocharged it's still six cylinder. I think the Cayman GT4 sounds better but this is not bad at all. It is a road car, it is not any special track day car or race car. For a road car it handles very well, it is fast. Well what more can you expect? Now, for the last car, I obviously saved the 918 Spider. It is one of the ultimate hypercars of nowadays and definitely the ultimate Porsche car sold today. It has a 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8 producing something like 640 brake horsepower and then it has two electric motors, one at the front, one at the rear. So together they produce almost 900 brake horsepower. It is just amazing what today's road cars can do. To be fair, 
It isn't terribly hard to drive. It is nicely balanced, it's four wheel drive, thanks to the electric motors. It feels very nice, engine has three modes, it has the sport mode, it has the race mode and it has the hot lap mode. I run the hot lap mode because I imagine that's the fastest, but I also run it with less grippier variant of the tire, there is the hypercar and hypercar trofeo. I run it on Nordschleife on sort of good well gripping track but not the best 20 degrees I also ran without the tire blanket so I started with the cold tires and it does handle remarkably well even if you know on Nordschleife there are no that m not that many slow corners even at the beginning on cold tires and slow corners it is powerful of course you have to be aware of that <laughs> but it's not wanting to kill you it wants to go hyper fast you have to adjust to that definitely you know you have to adapt that the balance between being on the brakes and on the accelerator pedal is so much different than in most other cars you have so much more on the brakes because while they're very good i don't think they're good enough for just the sorts of speed it can achieve compared to the other cars you have to be much more time on the brakes they are getting an absolute punishment and you have to brake early because it speeds how it just gains it it's incredible it's nicely balanced it feels good but it, you have to ad just adapt to looking that much further ahead and just carrying planning your brake points way earlier than usually places where 99% of other cars are flat out even very fast cars I'm talking not a normal Astro or something. No, I'm talking Ferraris, I'm talking Nissan GTR, I'm talking all the Porsches like 911s. There are places when in these cars you are completely flat out. In here, you probably won't be. You see, gain so much speed. It's incredible. And the engine sounds nice because it revs up to 9000 RPM. Uh, it, it is really a great car. I don't know how quick it would be in comparison to that Moby Dick I drove earlier. It really would be about the same pace. I think the Moby Dick would have more downforce, but the newer tires are grippier and this I feel this is faster in the straight line and it's four wheel drive so it has more traction. I feel this would be faster. This is an amazing piece of equipment and this, remember, this is a road legal car. I know it's expensive as like fuck and only few people in the world will ever be able to buy it because it's in limited numbers. But my god, it is quick. And on that note, we have to end this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment on what you think, and should I do the same for the second DLC pack, which is out now, already on PCs, not on the consoles, on the consoles it will be fucking 2017 probably, but never mind. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.